This is a problem of conservation of angular momentum. The system is isolated and consists of the merry-go-round and John. So initially, the merry-go-round itself has angular momentum because it is rotating at 20 RPM, so that's its initial angular velocity. And the fact that John is running perpendicular to the radius of the merry-go-round actually gives him angular momentum as well with respect to the center of the merry-go-round. And if his speed, v, which is 5 meters per second, is perpendicular to the distance out from the center of that merry-go-round, r, then John himself actually has angular momentum. And the total angular momentum of the system before would be the angular momentum of the merry-go-round plus the angular momentum of John. Now after, when John jumps on the merry-go-round, he now contributes to the moment of inertia of the system, but the whole thing is now traveling at a common angular speed, omega f. And the final angular momentum would be i of both John and the merry-go-round times that final angular velocity. Now back to our initial situation, the angular momentum of the merry-go-round would be the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round times its angular velocity. And the angular momentum of John as a separate particle running at speed v would be mvr. So the moment of inertia of a disk is half mr squared. And then John is mvr. So that's the initial total angular momentum. And that must be exactly equal to the final total angular momentum. Um, I'll put this up here. I total now is the moment of inertia of the merry-go-round, half mr squared, plus the moment of inertia as of John as just a blob on the edge, which would just be mr squared times omega f. Okay, and we know everything except omega f, so we're going to equate these two expressions. So we have half mr squared omega i plus mvr is one half mr squared mr squared omega f. And capital M is the mass of the merry-go-round and small m is the mass of John. And those are given to us. Mass of the merry-go-round is 250 kilograms mass of John is just 30 kilograms and you have to be careful about that radius we're given the diameter is three meters and so the radius is only one and a half meters so that's a very common mistake is to accidentally put the diameter in instead of the radius we're given the initial angular velocity of the merry-go-round as 20 rpm but you must put that into rads per second because you're mixing it with this MVR expression. So if you convert that to rads per second, you have to multiply by 2 pi rads per revolution over 60 seconds per minute. And so that, in fact, is equal to 2 thirds pi rads per second. Okay, so we're ready to solve for omega f. Omega f will become 1 half mr squared omega i plus mvr all divided by 1 half mr squared plus little mr squared. Now we can see that 1r cancels, so I may as well cancel an r, top and bottom, and see what we have here. And then I'm going to factor out an r on the bottom just to make it a little easier to compute. And that's our expression for omega f. So let's sub in the numbers. 5, don't forget to use rads per second. And that's the speed of John meters per second for v. Omega 
radius times half of 250 plus 30. And if you put all those numbers in, you come up with an omega in rads per second. And that works out to 2.33 rads per second. But you have to put that into RPM because that's what the question asks. So to convert back to RPM, we simply multiply by 60 and divide by 2 pi. And that gives us 22 RPM. And that's the final answer.